There have been very few freshmen that come in and play like Jabari Smith in terms of being a team guy, getting others involved, playing within, as you talked about, within the scheme of this offense. He's been a real treat. Uh, he is a special player with elite talent. We'll see how this Murray State offense works against this high-pressure Auburn defense. First corner shot and a foul against Auburn as Tevin Brown wastes little time launching, but a foul on K.D. Johnson to get things started. Dave, Murray State will run about 250 different sets, and on 249 <laughs> of them, Tevin Brown is option one or two. And somebody for Auburn is going to have to keep up with their Fitbit tonight because you're going to have to chase him all over the floor. Taking a quick look at the monitor to make sure that was a three-pointer or a two-pointer. Terry Oglesby, Steven Anderson, Rob Rourke, our officials tonight. It's hard to see right in front of that Auburn bench, that, you know, first glance tells me that was a three yeah i think his toes are behind i think that's three well they're gonna Ooh, give him like two, i said maybe. yeah <laughs> yeah we both that's two yeah that was a two but tevin brown will step to the free throw lot a 78 percent foul shooter 28 out of 36 on the year and we talked about offensively for these two teams. Just to put it in perspective, Auburn averaging 82 points a game. That's 19th in America. Murray State at 86 points a game. That is sixth in the country. And they're averaging 93 points a game in their last three. Take a look at the starting five for the Auburn Tigers. J.D. Johnson, the transfer from Georgia. Zep Jasper, also a transfer. In from College of Charleston. First miss. Rebound to the Racers. Here's the starting five for Murray State. We've talked a lot about Tevin Brown. K.J. Williams having another exceptional season. The junior out of Cleveland, Mississippi. He's averaging 16 and a half points a game. That's a rare turnover by Hill at the point. He's only made 17 on the year. Talking to Coach Matt McMahon of Murray State, he couldn't say enough nice things about Justice Hill. Alley oop off the mark. Jasper's pass a little shy. If you can't catch and finish that, just catch it and come back down. Nice pass inside. DJ Burns able to complete the play. The transfer from Southern University. Dave, I want to go back to the tempo that you mentioned earlier and how these two teams like early offense. I think the shot clock operator can take the night off. <laughs> yes. Kessler with the easy two. Auburn finally on the board. 18 and a half to go first half. Two teams at 10 and 1 on the year. They both have won seven straight ball games. Hill. Off the front of the rim, rebound into the hands of Jabari Smith. KD. Bounce pass, not a good one, trying to get it inside to Kessler. And just too much traffic down in that high rent district. If you want to watch the game within the game, top of your screen, 10 in the blue. Keep your eye on Tevin Brown at all times. Nice take to the basket. Murray State now with six on the board. Boy, what a quick first step from Justice Hill. I call him Juice. See his numbers in the lower left part of that screen. Over 12 points a game. Jabari Smith step back. Oh, that is, you can't stop it. If he makes it, good for him, right? He is so good and so lethal. Plays with such a maturity. Murray State shooting 51% as a team. First three of the game is perfect from K.J. Williams, who's 
Now 12 of 37 on the year. Yeah, Williams coming off a tough night against Chattanooga. Only had eight points and missed all five from beyond the arc. Not going to miss that one. Cambridge throwing it down. Speaking of good movement without the ball. Dave, isn't this what we expected? <laughs> it is back and forth. I mean, really, it comes down to, I would think, tonight, who can make the most stops defensively? Long rebound. Kessler spins. Pushed out of his spot, and he'll head to the free throw line. Kessler was so big the last couple of games for this Auburn team, averaging 16 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds, four and a half blocks. But it was the season high 19 against St. Louis with nine rebounds and six blocks that provided the opportunity for the Tigers to beat the Billikens. What I liked about that replay as we watched it again, Katie Johnson, who received the pass. One of my pet peeves, Dave, is, is that guards dribble the ball way too much. And Katie Johnson caught the ball and evaluated instead of dribble. And what he evaluated was his big guy had his defender on his hip down in the post. That's a wonderful job by Johnson evaluating what was available. Murray State by two. Kessler gets one out of two at the line. Berman will check in for Auburn. Hannibal right down the lane. Couldn't get it to go. The transfer from South Carolina. Here's That's Smith. one you got to make. Pull up three. Auburn with a lead by one. In his last six games, Smith, 17 for 35. Make it 18 for 36. That's 50%. From bonus land. 45% on the year for a young man that's 6'10. Good defense from Berman creates the turnover. Boy, we thought we'd have some points on the board. That's what we're seeing, Mark. Well, it's going back death at Murray State. Matt McMahon in his seventh year at Murray. Matter of fact, he's now the dean of OVC coaches in just his seventh year. And he has put together another fine product. Said he didn't even worry about last year. When it was over, it was over. He flushed it. Didn't even want to talk about it. It's a new team, new season. And he really, obviously, likes his ball club this year. I, th I think he used the word buried about five times. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he, he did not yeah. want to talk about it. Last touch by Auburn. It'll belong to the Racers. That's one of the few times I have seen Smith force a shot this year. Well, Auburn comes in, number 10 in the net. Murray State at 43 in the net. Bruce Pearl talking about Murray State, a dangerous club, and he knows. He just hopes his team realizes how good this is. He can preach it all he wants, but sometimes you got to get popped a little bit, right, to understand that it's it, it is a it is a challenge. Well, they Step don't hand three. out NCAA bids in December, but you certainly can earn them. Smith trying to post up. Shot clock in single digits. KD Johnson <laughs> fires away. Left it short. Back the other way goes Hannibal and misses another chippy. Well, that was a higher degree of difficulty. No look pass underneath. Cardwell with a slam. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Pass first pass got deflected. Just saw Alan Flanagan get to the scorer's table. He is about to make his first appearance of the season. The young man averaged over 14 points a game last year. And, well, it was an off-the-court injury. Had Achilles surgery in September. 
The expected recovery was 12 to 14 weeks. He's been practicing with the team the last couple of weeks. Coach Pearl told us today that he will run him two or three minutes, a couple of times each half, just to see how it goes. And if things, if, it, if his Achilles tightens up, they might just sit him the rest of the game and kind of reassess. But I hope he can get two or three minutes a couple times each half. So we'll see. How about the reception he got from the crowd, Dave? And everybody was up. Now, I know everybody is up on the side that you can see, but when we got that wider view, uh, everybody in Auburn Arena was on their feet. Well, you know his heartbeat is racing. Probably for a couple of reasons, Mark. I would think, A, he's excited to be out there, but B, it's the first right. time he's, you, you can test it at practice, but as Coach Pearl was talking to us, it's different when the lights are on. I'm anxious to see if he guards Tevin Brown. Talk about <laughs> an opening struggle. Walker Kessler knocking home that three-pointer. How about the fact Kessler was just two for 19 from deep before that made? Another takeaway, the swarming Auburn defense. Here's Flanagan. Jasper, air ball. We've got to make that room service. And a foul on the other end, and Tevin Brown will head to the free throw line. Both of these teams are so transition driven. Watch Flanagan chase the screen, deflect the ball. That forces the turnover, makes the great decision on the other end. And then. Tevin Brown, and I talked about his evolution as an offensive player early on in his career, known just as a shooter, has become more deadly and can score in a variety of ways now. Good free throw shooter misses that opportunity. That was the first points in the last four minutes for Murray State. Auburn had six straight stops defensively until that basket by Brown. Kessler, 7-1, post player, perimeter player, call him whatever you want. He's a the new age hooper. It'll stay with Auburn. One Boy, of the Kessler. challenges for Murray State and Matt McMahon is that when he talked to us a couple of days ago is on the glass. And speaking of on the glass... Auburn needs to do a better job of rebounding. Even though they won at St. Louis, they got crushed. Put back by Jalen Williams. He's averaging seven and a half points a game, shooting 52% from the field. Easy to shoot that when you get to the rim. Boy, Auburn double in the basketball, trying to get it out of Hill's hands immediately. Nice job by Williams on the closeout. Made that a challenge three. Another no look by Green. Easy basket for Williams. Timeout, Murray State. With Action Walker Kessler has provided that. And Auburn leads the NCAA. And then you've got to have a three point presence. And Auburn certainly has that. Uh, Dave, when I go back and look at uh, Baylor last year, I think people uh, uh, kind of underestimated how good Baylor was on the offensive end. In the semifinals and the finals, Baylor made double-figure threes in each game. You must have a three-point presence. And we just saw a moment ago the rim protector, Kessler, changing that shot in the process. Giving the offense an opportunity at the other end, a foul on the floor against Green before the shot. And then, Dave, the two things that I didn't put on that list, because it's, it's not applicable right now for Bruce Pearl or any other program, you got to enter the tournament healthy, and then somewhere along the way, you got to get a break. The, the basketball gods have got to smile on you in some way, shape, or fashion. Kessler already won three tonight. That one is off the mark. 
Rebound yanked out of there by Jordan Skipper Brown. Hannibal. Get it to K.J. Williams. K.J. just traveled with it. Again, Flanagan is being disruptive even though he didn't guard the ball. Why? Because he would not allow Tevin Brown to come off that dribble handoff. Flanagan still on the floor. Dave, do you think one of the assistants are going to have to remind Coach Pearl to take him out? <laughs> yeah, I would, yes, I do. <laughs> well, coming up next, the second game of our doubleheader, Darius Days, Tari Eason, and undefeated number 19 LSU take on Lipscomb at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge. It's all right here on the SEC Network, and of course, you can always catch it on the ESPN app. And as Mark just mentioned, I bet somebody tugged on Coach Pearl and said, hey, we might want to give him a, a little breather. So Flanagan <laughs> on the bench. Kessler gets the basket. Kessler's offensive game is also evolving. What did Bruce Pearl say? When he gets better offensively, we'll be able to take the next step in our progression. Auburn's lead is 10. And they've really done it with some fantastic defense. Kessler taps it around. Loose ball into the hands of Tevin Brown. And a foul against the Tigers. Skipper Brown will head to the free throw line. Nice job of moving the ball ahead by Tevin Brown in transition. One of the problems and one of the struggles, I think, for the racers in this game is can they get enough stops so that their transition game can be effective? Jalen Williams to the bench. Couple of subs coming in. Katie Johnson back on the floor. Skipper Brown transferred in from Eastern Illinois. He's the first transfer from Murray State to come from another Ohio Valley Conference school. As they loosened those regulations. And Hannibal has been to the rim three times. Three times. And missed every one of them tonight. Well, no excuse on this one. He had a wide open path. I love the effort. Shooting the gap. Creating the turnover. But you cannot miss this wide open of a dunk. The other two were attempted lay-ins. That one was the attempted flush, and they've all gone a ride. Hannibal will try it again as he lowers his shoulder, which we saw for two years at South Carolina when he was with Frank Martin. Yeah, Hannibal is one of those players, Dave, that walks the fine line. He's always been disruptive defensively, but he kind of walks that fine line between being aggressive and sometimes out of control. But as long as he can get himself to the free throw line, like he did against Chattanooga, where he went five for five in that big win, then he becomes kind of an, a valuable asset off the bench for the Racers. 17 steals leads the team. He's averaging double-figure points. Played 20 games last year for Frank Martin at South Carolina. Averaged six points, three rebounds a game. Has three years left to play for Murray if he chooses. There's a takeaway by Brown. Kevin. Boy, some nifty ball handling to the rim. Oh, man, was that fancy. Well, he gets it done on both ends of the floor because he read the lob pass from the weak side, and then nobody stopped him in transition, so he went all the way to the rack. Third straight turnover for Auburn. Katie Johnson sneaks free on the baseline, lays it in. 
Yeah, Auburn under Bruce Pearl, even when Bruce Pearl was at Tennessee, they run different versions of the flex. And all five positions are interchangeable. You've got to guard that flex cut at all times. Williams blocked by Kessler. Walker Kessler. First in the SEC, fifth in the country in blocks per game at 3.6. This is Brown reading the weak side. That pass had way too much air on it. Watch him kind of slow down and then burst. Great guards learn to play with different speeds. DJ Burns. Get it back to Tevin Brown. Shot clock at two. He gets the shot away. In and out. Won't go. Rebound in the hands of Cardwell. Jasper. Johnson to Jabari Smith. Burns defending him. There's the double team. Kicks it back out. Looking for the open shot, and they get it. Cambridge. I uh, just love the ball reversal after the inside touch. Burns working hard underneath. Can't get it to go. Smith the rebound. He'll lead the charge. That's a great example of what Coach Pearl was telling us about Jabari Smith. He could have easily forced that shot up. Resets the offense. Great point. He just makes so many great and simple decisions. Rebound to K.J. Williams. Lead is 11. Largest of the night. And Murray's got to find the range. The Racers missed seven of their last eight. K.D. Johnson read that pass. Couldn't save it. Murray State will have it, but boy, some good offense from the Tigers. Two cornerstones of being good offensively, inside touches, and Ball played very good with the ball. Uh, and when they, right now, I don't know that Alabama can beat you in as many different ways as I think other teams in the league can right now. But when we talked about, and you mentioned this earlier, at LSU, how, what an impact that Tari Eason has made on that club. Yeah. Nice. Off the window. Brown. High. Over the square. 26-17. Auburn out in front. Did you see how calm Brown was, though? Didn't get in a hurry. Well, that's an effort rebound. One thing we've learned about Katie Johnson, Mark, he's going to bring you effort. He may not make a yep. shot. Yep. <laughs> he's going to bring the effort. Here's Jabari Smith. Kicks it back out. Cambridge leaves it short. There's KD Johnson again. The follow inside by Cardwell. Auburn working, flexing on the offensive glass. Well, I got to tell you, Somebody KD was... Johnson has been the energizer bunny here in the first half. Take another look. Johnson just being active, which most great offensive rebounders can do. Cardwell finishes up, but that's all because of the effort by Johnson. What we di didn't show was Johnson chasing down the long offensive rebound to keep that possession alive the time before. Murray State averaging 86 points a game. Sitting on 17 right now. This game, we thought, with the way we got the first four minutes underway, we thought we'd be at 50 to 45 at the break. Kessler with another block. And Kessler immediately is going, my bad, my bad. He knows that he got beat off the bounce. His length allowed him to recover. That's his third block tonight, averaging 3.6 fifth in the country.
Pull up jumper off the mark from Justice Hill. And there's a foul way away from the basket by Nicholas McMullen. The SEC Network has Alabama and Georgia covered on New Year's Eve for the college football playoff semifinals. Our coverage starts at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central Time, and wraps up after the Orange Bowl with the SEC football final. They'll break down both games, have reactions from coaches and players. Nobody covers the SEC like we do, and nobody better cover it better than we do since the name of the network is SEC Network. <laughs> we will be all over it. <laughs> Long rebound out to Hannibal. Here's Brown. Devin Brown has been a a big key to this offense all season long, and it continues here tonight at Auburn Arena. And again, if Murray State's going to have success in transition, it all starts with getting a defensive stop. Flanagan back on the floor. Got a couple of minutes his first go round. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that step back jumper. You should be a fan of that one. He steps into <laughs> that one, does Jalen Williams and buries it. You know how Bruce Pearl Dave gives guys the green light? Jalen Williams just four for 19. Does that matter to Bruce Pearl? Heck no. If you're open, shoot it. Kevin Brown will shoot it open or not, and he will bury it. Brown now with 13. Enough, got just enough space from Berman. Murray State does a lot of that dribble handoff, and if you're not chasing close by, eye, Brown will get that three-point shot off quickly. Flanagan working the baseline. Now comes out to the wing. There is Green. That is a long three. It'll stay with Auburn. Our under four-minute timeout on the floor. Auburn's lead. Are, and talking to Coach Pearl, like, he felt like if he starts knocking down some shots, he's a really good shooter, just hasn't dropped. But if they can get the performances that they've gotten the last couple of games, Mark, this Auburn right. team's going to be really hard to beat. Well, in the last couple, he's averaged 16.5, eight and a half on the glass, and catch this one, four and a half blocks per. There are a lot of teams in the country that don't have four and a half blocks a game. Jalen Williams with another, I don't want to say easy, because it's never easy at this level, but got to the rim and laid it in. Nine points for Williams here in the opening half. Boy, Brown left wide open, and he'll make you pay his second three of the half. He's got Again, 16. It's all, it's all about taking the correct angles off screens. And if you take the wrong angle, you get screened, and you'll be getting the ball out of the net with Tevin Brown. Auburn shooting 46%. Murray State at 36%. And a foul against Hannibal. Eight-point game. Auburn's biggest lead has been a dozen. Dave, with the pace and the tempo that these two teams are going to play with, eight points in this game is nothing. Kessler gets it to Smith. Jasper asking for a little screen. Got some room. High arching shot. No good. There is Brown with that rebound. Kevin Brown, 6'5", out of Fairhope, Alabama. And gets almost six rebounds a game. You see why. But turns it over there. Berman comes up with a nice defensive play. Remember, it was Berman who hit that three for the late lead in that road win at St. Louis. In and out for Smith. How did that not go in? Hannibal takes it in the paint, nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. 
take another look from the baseline coming right at you. Thought he had a teammate around the defenders. But nothing there. I've often said, Dave, I wish guards would understand about eight feet from the rim. There needs to be a force field and stop right there and play off two feet. I see way too many guards play off one foot and usually that gets them in trouble. Knocked out of bounds with 139 to go before halftime. Auburn has won 38 straight non-conference games at Auburn Arena. 38 straight. Kevin Brown with another rebound. Brown has four of those. He also has the racers' last 12 points. And this foul is on Johnson coming from behind, but this is because nobody stopped the ball. First rule in thumb in transition defense, and I didn't, I didn't think there was much there. Did you? No. That looked like a pretty clean steal by Johnson, or at least deflection by Johnson. How about them putting Kessler on the inbounder? You know, Bruce Pearl was ahead of the game when he was at Tennessee in special situations, side outs, out unders. Everybody does it now, but he gets a lot of credit for that. Kessler affected that shot. Ball bounced it into the hands of Green. Blocked on the inside by KJ Williams. KJ's averaging 16 and a half points a game. And he has had a tough night for Murray State. Three points on one of six from the field. They got to get him going. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna have a tough time, I think, with the length of Kessler inside. But remember, he stepped out early in the half and knocked down a three ball. Good look at Steven Anderson, one of our officials. They'll get it into the hands of Tevin Brown. Leading the OVC in scoring. Three-pointers made. Assist to turnover ratio and minutes. And look at Cambridge at the top of the floor. Oh, boy. A foul on Brown as he just pushed Cambridge. As you were talking, right as you said that, he got pushed to the floor. Yeah. Well, Cambridge was kind of bumping him the entire way down the floor and Brown sort of retaliated and gets called for the personal take another look top of the screen Cambridge right on Brown and Brown just gets frustrated and pushes him what you didn't see was Cambridge kind of bumping him as he went through the lane frustration should be, foul should that be a flagrant in my world, that's a play on. But I think I'm 0 for 1 tonight <laughs> so far. Yeah, we, we both are. We both missed that one earlier. Excessive and or unnecessary. Now that'll be the one that gets Tevin Brown if it's called a flagrant one. Take another look at this, Dave, as they came up the floor. Watch Cambridge. They're bumping once, bumping twice. So that's what kind of led to the frustration. And then maybe a little bit of an acting job. Yeah, they're going to call it a flagrant. A flagrant one on Brown. But certainly fit into the unnecessary definition. So Cambridge at the free throw line where he is an 80% foul shooter this year has not been good over his career. Yeah, I was about to say that 80%. That's the best of his career by far. 
even with the 80% this year, throw it in to the mix. He's still 54% at the line. But look good there. Wow, what a swing here. Murray yeah, State had the ball. This could be a six or seven point swing in reality. Under a minute to go in the first half. Well, they're trying to post up Jabari Smith. Well, he is begging for it. And there's a deflection by Hannibal. That'll be Hannibal's second foul of the first half. Yeah, unnecessary foul. Shot clock inside 10. Foul 30 feet from the basket. Puts Auburn to the free throw line in the bonus. So Green at the line. 79% foul shooter. Been in double figures last three games. Got it to go down. Hey, our women's basketball doubleheader next Thursday. Number one, South Carolina is in Missouri to take on the Tigers at 7 Eastern. Then number 23, Texas A&M hosts Vandy in College Station. It's both games right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. And how about South Carolina? Another win yeah. against a ranked team last night. Full house in Columbia over Stanford. I mean, you look at their schedule. It is ranked team, ranked team, ranked team, ranked team, right. ranked team. It's all wins. Weren't they down 18, I think, in that yeah. game? Had a big comeback. And I know you saw Gary Blair's jacket. Oh, I did. <laughs> My man, Gary Blair. He's one of a kind. Sorry he is stepping away at the end of this year. Long career. He's been awesome for the women's game. Foul underneath. That'll go against Berman as he trips up Hannibal. Take another look. Yeah, I think you're going to get a quick whistle on anything off the ball. That was more excuse me than anything else, but it did knock Hannibal to the floor. Gets him to the free throw line. Left it short. Kessler the rebound. Wow, this was eight points, and Murray had the ball, Dave. Jabari Smith will get it to Wendell Green, Jr. Lofts it up in the air, and one last opportunity here for the racers. K.J. Williams, that'll be goaltending with .4 seconds. Count the basket, and that'll cut it to 10. Not very good end of clock management possession by Auburn. Went way too early, which allowed Murray State to counterpunch in what they do best, their transition game. That'll do it for the first half. Not as many points as we expected, but Auburn does have the 10-point advantage. Walker Kessler with eight points and three blocks in the first 20 minutes. And the Tigers trying to push their consecutive winning streak at home against non-conference of defensively three blocks in the first half. Williams had some really good looks right at the iron. Kevin Brown, really the only offense. And I, I guess if, if you're in that Murray State locker room at halftime, how do you try to get some offense? Well, you've got to get Juice Williams, excuse me, Juice Hill going at the point. I mean, he was really quiet, had a couple of fouls, only played 10 minutes. He's got to be better in the second half like he was in the second half at Memphis when he was sensational. Racers can't get their first shot to go. Kessler grabs that rebound. Dave, that's one of those underrated stats that does not get kept. I don't know that Kessler blocked that shot, but he certainly altered it. Shot clock oh. down to six. Johnson step back. Won't go, but an offensive rebound again. And a traveling violation against Cambridge. Well, good thing the shot clock operator came back from halftime. We haven't needed him in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> I think we only had maybe two possessions, 
They got around five seconds in that on the shot clock in that first half. Not many. Here's that dribble handoff. And there is Justice Hill. So Hill now with four points. Dave, did you see where Hill stopped and played off two feet? That's exactly what I'm talking about in guard play. KD Johnson, strong move to the basket. Oh, that's just power hoops from a guard. Burn, strong move, took it right to Kessler, didn't go down. Tough pass, KD Johnson, nowhere to go with it. Talked about. Murray State's dribble drive, excuse me, their dribble handoff. Here's the dribble handoff. The defender gets confused, should I keep chasing or not? Jabari Smith didn't know whether to step up or not. So what does Hill do? He does the smart thing, plays off two feet, take what the defense gives you. Murray State shooting 36%, Auburn at 41. Brown gets his own miss. Had it, lost it. It'll stay with Murray State. And that's where Auburn got caught flat-footed in terms of the offensive rebound. No way should a three-point shooter miss and get their own rebound. Long outlet. Katie Johnson almost got there, but here's Brown. And Williams, excuse me, Hill buries the three. And he has five quick points out of the locker room. On cue, Juice Hill. Seven-point game. And another We're opportunity look, here. It looks like Murray has come out with a little bit more energy than Auburn right now. K.J. Williams... A 30% three-point shooter. Hit one earlier. Misfires on that one. Jabari Smith in that first half. Five points. Two of six. He's trying to get it going. Boy, big hop step. Did, did you see the way he extended, though? I mean, wasn't that a like a guard-like play? It's hard to believe he's 6'10", the way he's moving. It's so fluid. Yes. Brown took it right to Kessler. He hits something else now. Well, that's how his game has evolved over the course of his career. How about this, Dave? How about the fact that Murray State has two 1,000-point scorers who have done all their scoring at Murray State? Now, we're not going to say that very often this year. Well, Tevin Brown, back-to-back -back OVC Player of the Week awards the last two weeks. Averaging almost 19 a game, has 18 right now on 7 of 11 from the field. Here's Williams, strong move. Kessler with the rejection. Boy, Smith and Kessler standing by the rim. You got no chance. Yes. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Take away. Juice Hill on the run. Foul against Smith. He'll head to the free throw line. And speaking of juice, Murray State and Juice Hill bringing the juice here in the second half. Well, like Dave said, six foot ten, but with the skill of a guard. Guided by five points or less, and that just doesn't happen at Murray State. And they've already got one close win and that comeback at Memphis when Hill and Brown were just simply sensational. Hill, 76% foul shooter, misses the first of two. 
was a junior college All-American before finding his way to Murray State last year. He's really been a key to this team. We talk a lot about Tevin Brown and K.J. Williams, but Coach McMahon clearly in our discussions wouldn't happen without the play of Justice Hill. Yeah, I asked him, I said, has Hill's emergence helped Tevin Brown? And what did he say? Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Jabari Smith, been a while since he's been on the board, knocks home that three-pointer. He's now in double figures to lead the Tigers with 10. Well, it must be nice to have a run stopper like Jabari Smith. In and out. The rebound to Green. Well, Green Great had a nice first half. Hill. And a foul against Justice Hill. I thought Green was really quiet in the first half as well. He did get on the boards, but has not made a shot except at the free throw line. A couple of assists as well for Green. Double figure score this year, averaging 11 and a half. Hey, coming up next, the second game of our double header. Darius Days, Tari Eason, an undefeated number 19 LSU take on Lipscomb. All coming your way from the Pete Vermage Assembly Center in Baton Rouge. It's all right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Had a chance to do LSU Georgia Tech last weekend and in Atlanta and talking to Will Wade. He's really excited about his defense because he feels like that thing will travel and they will have an opportunity every game because of the way they play defense. Last year, there was no such thing as defense in Baton Rouge. <laughs> I don't think they've played defense the last three or four years right. in Baton Rouge. But they are this year. But things get real, real serious for LSU after this game with Lipscomb. It's conference play begins, and it is a onslaught wow. of SEC. Look at that schedule for LSU to start the league. <laughs> My gosh. And it all starts yeah, that, right here at Auburn on December 29th. The, that is the short straw. <laughs> we'll find out a lot about LSU in the next few weeks. Well, that's the third three-pointer by Murray State that's halfway down the cylinder and kicks out. And then a foul on Hannibal on the loose ball. And for Hannibal, that'll be his third. Well, K.J. Williams, 31% for Matt McMahon on the year. So, I mean, he's certainly not an elite shooter, but he can make that shot, and he's so wide open because Kessler is so far off of him. Green kicks it back out. It'll belong to Auburn with nine on the shot clock. I thought there were like 19 near turnovers in that possession. <laughs> so you're saying it wasn't very smooth? It was not very clean. <laughs> Flanagan back on the floor. Jabari Smith takes a seat for a moment. Boy, Murray State hoping for the shot clock violation, oh. and they don't get it. Instead, it's a three by Auburn. Green from half court. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Just like they drew it up. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Well, I guess I can say, dear Santa, please let this go in. Shot clock dwindling, lines it up. Oh, he stared it down too, didn't he? That's crazy. 
And it gives Auburn their largest lead of the night at 14. K.J. Williams spins, fires, answers back with a three-point opportunity on the way. Well, let me tell you what K.J. Williams did right then. He recognized that Kessler was not on the floor. <laughs> And he's got a different guy guarding him, and he's going, hey, I think I can take this dude. Finally got some breathing room, the 6'10 junior out of Cleveland, Mississippi, down in the Delta. Two-time All-OVC, first team member. He's twice been named OVC Player of the Week. He and Brown have kind of dominated that award first six weeks of the season. Berman! Oh, oh, oh. My goodness. <laughs> they don't ask how, oh. they just ask how many, right? <laughs> back to back, three balls. Scoop shot by Williams doesn't go. Well, you gotta shoot that, don't you? I know I would have. Now, I probably would have missed it, but I definitely would have shot it. Knocked out of bounds. Boy, Green holding that hand like he got popped. One of the things that has been impressive about Auburn this year is they're winning the arc. Look at how many they're making, and then that bottom one, the three-point differential from the arc. Almost nine points a game. So you're starting almost 9-0 to start the game when you play Auburn. The first basket of this season for Alan Flanagan off an inbounds as he kisses it off the window. Boy, Brown pushed toward that baseline, threw it off the side of the backboard. But Bruce Pearl is happy at Flanagan. I can tell you who that clap was for. Because Flanagan chased Brown off the line and then turned around and chased him to the baseline. Tevin Brown getting a rare breather on the bench for Matt McMahon. Flanagan had it knocked out of his hand. A foul against Hannibal, and that'll be number four on Trey. Time out. Can you please, please deliver these on Christmas Day for these head coaches? I would say that Bruce Pearl's got to be happy with the way his team has rebounded the basketball tonight. They have 33 rebounds. They have kept Murray State under 20. Dave, let me ask you this question. You, you've done a lot of Auburn and Tennessee games over the years with Bruce Pearl. When was the last time he sat down during a game? That, I, I, that's a great question. Maybe when he was having some knee problems. <laughs> that would have been five, six years ago, perhaps. Moving much more fluid now. Is Coach certainly, Pearl. Yeah, certainly good news for Bruce Pearl and his whole staff to see Alan Flanagan back on the floor. Murray State got a lift with Collins making that three ball. They need to get him more involved. Mark, you've you, you coached for a while. You've been around the game a long time. How long will it take before Auburn gets into a rhythm with Flanagan back? Yeah. I mean, is it a week, two weeks, three weeks? How long does that process take? Well, how long does the non-conference take if you were doing everything according to Hoyle? I mean, you, it would take you at least two or three weeks, right? So I think it's the same kind of time frame. Uh, certainly the rotations change a little bit as you take a look at Flanagan's numbers. And, you know, he's on, on a lot of people's draft lists in terms of late first round, middle of the second round. I certainly think he's going to have a chance. Uh, but he's not going to get, Dave... From zero to 25 minutes in one game, one week, probably not two weeks. So he played six minutes in the first half. We'll see how many he plays in this half as well. 
but it's going to be an adjustment for the backcourt players more than the front court. You know, you just think, you know, Auburn's played, this is their 12th game of the season, obviously. And guys get comfortable in their roles, and now things are really going to change with each game because he's getting more and more minutes, and you want him on the floor, right. there's no question. I mean, he obviously could be a 15, 18-point score a game for you. But you're about to hit the, you know, you start with LSU next week. I I'll worry about the roles later. Uh, yeah. To me, the bottom line is he will make them better. And we, I think you and I are on the same page. We might, if you if you ask me what team do I think is built to go the furthest in the tournament, as you take a look at not only those two players, but across the SEC in terms of prospects. But if you ask me what team is built to go the furthest in the NCAA tournament, my, my usual answer to that is, well, how, how many different ways can teams win games? And I think right now Auburn can win games in a lot of different ways. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. They're, they're hard to stop. Fourteen point advantage for the Tigers. Another one in and out for Murray State. Boy, it's a carnival rim down there on our right. Kessler looking for the jam. Tevin Brown comes over to stop that, but fouls in the process. That'll be number two on Brown. In transition, the little drag screen. Kessler rolls, nifty little pocket pass by Green. Do you know how impressive that is, though, Dave, for a big guy to be on the move like that and catch a pocket pass? That pocket pass is a bounce pass that comes off the floor. So for a big guy, they don't like to look down and catch passes. They want it in the numbers. That's really impressive by Kessler. Kind of a danger zone for Murray State, I think. Shot clock at five. Williams steps inside the arc, left it short, rebound to Green. Boy, Green has grabbed a lot of long rebounds. That's number nine for him tonight. It takes it the distance. I like the way Green read the traffic in transition. I think he wanted to lob it to Kessler. But the defender never committed to him. Good decision. Largest lead of the game. Brown trying to answer oh, back. Man. Goodness, is he fun to watch. 21 tonight. You know, he had a double-double four years ago to this day in this same arena when Murray State played Auburn. Now, Murray State had a little bit of a different point guard back then. Uh, this guy named uh, uh, Ja Morant, I think. <laughs> yeah, he can play a little bit. <laughs> Kessler with the tap in. Brown. Had it taken out of his hands by Green. Green now with nine rebounds and 11 points. Just so disruptive has Flanagan been guarding Brown. Really messes up the timing of the Murray State offense. Kessler just goes up over Burns for that rebound. Oh, trying to alley-oop to Smith. That have brought the house down. Window Green having a heck of a second half here. Well, Green wants to pass it. Look him seem. I Kessler, the defender never comes to him. Flanagan was the disruptive force. And, you know, you don't always have to score. I can't convince any player of this. But you <laughs> don't have to score in order to impact the game, believe it or not. Oh, here's Murray with a little zone. 
Little matchup 2 3. Katie Johnson gets it to Kessler. Tabari just elevates for three. You can tell he kind of forced that one up. He's had a somewhat of a quiet night. Scoop shot won't go. Tapped around a couple of times, and Smith pulls it out of there. His eighth rebound. Tabari with 10 points, now eight boards, a couple of assists. Well, when you talk about Smith and Kessler, they can either one or sometimes both give you double doubles on any given night. Boy, Green just so patient. Oh, how about Green using the offhand? But guess what, Dave? How many feet did he play off of? Two. Thank you. <laughs> Battling you for the loose quick, ball comes. You are a quick study. I'm learning. That's how you get it done. Hill step back off the mark. Burn the rebound. Williams too strong, but fouled in the process. Take another look at Wendell Green playing off two feet, but he shoots it with his left hand. Might have gotten away with a carry there. That's pretty crafty and creative. How about 13 and 10 for Mr. Green? Transfer from Eastern Kentucky. Not bad for a guy 5'11. His eighth game at double figures, including four straight now. Back to the zone. Yeah, I'm never a fan. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm never a fan once you hesitate. Don't shoot. It'll stay with Murray State. Murray State beat Memphis earlier this year, 74-72. They've won seven straight after a loss to East Tennessee State, their only loss of the year. Now they made ten second-half threes in that comeback at Memphis. Timeout taken by Auburn as Jasper got tied up. We'll step aside. 5.50 to go in this one. Albert in control by 19. Blues. Oh, well, certainly. I, I think it's, it's you know, for an Alabama team, can they run the ball well enough? They've had some injuries in the backfield. But what they did in the second half, really from the second quarter on against Georgia, the championship game, showed me that that is a team that is certainly refocused on the task at hand. And Georgia's got to get some better quarterback play, I think. There's a nice jumper from K.J. Williams, top of the key. All I know is this. If you're going to win it all, you better score. And you know how I feel about defending and rebounding. I think the same is true in football. You're not going to win the national title 17 to 13. Not going to happen. You're not going to win this game 17-13 either. <laughs> <laughs> Auburn. <laughs> Lead back up to 18. Makes it look awfully easy at times, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm, uh, I'm a, a big fan. Watching him in State Farm Arena with Kevin Durant, Charles Barkley in attendance. Jabari Smith was really, really good. And how many times have we seen, not first of all, a nice pass there to Kessler, but how many times have we seen a young freshman, 18 years old, in that right. kind of environment with those guys watching, go two for 14 and, and lay an egg? Right. He didn't. And he's playing against not only older players, but maybe the oldest group of players that college basketball has ever had because of the COVID redo. 
Right. Let's see what Murray State can do with three opportunities here on this possession. Auburn has matched their biggest lead of the night at 20. Devin Brown. Boy, he gets hammered on the way to the basket. Couldn't tell who got him. Was that Kessler or Cambridge? Either way, he took a shot. We're going to give it to Cambridge. Early in his career, Tevin Brown just kind of roamed around the arc. And when we talked about it at the top of the show for Matt McMahon's team, he has evolved. His offensive game has evolved. He can now score off the bounce, get to the rim. He can get to the free throw line. And when you can score in a variety of ways, guess what? You lead the league in scoring. And that's exactly what Tevin Brown is doing. Pretty good week for Tevin Brown. Last two games. 33 the, sitting on 22. Yeah. The efficiency. That's an offensive foul. Cambridge using that offhand. That'll be a foul against Cambridge, and that'll be his second. If you have got a rim protector like Walker Kessler, who does the dirty work with rim protection. <laughs> and Jabbar's like, but I was wide open underneath. <laughs> You know what he's saying right now? He's saying, I have told everybody I have got deep, deep range. <laughs> yeah. Nice double-double for Green, 13 and 10. Devin Brown. Another little one-handed shot off the backboard. Doesn't go down. Another block shot for Auburn. Wide open for Williams. Won't go. You know, Kentucky and Auburn both had these scary games. I know Kentucky's was a late ad with Western Kentucky. Right. But the Hilltoppers, very good club under Rick Stansberry. Murray State, obviously 10 and 1, top 50 in the net. These are tough games to play. Coach Bull's kind of brushing it off, but you've been in this business. You know how these kids yeah. around Christmas time can maybe lose focus a little bit. Uh, there's no question. They start smelling the uh, fire burning and want to get home. Um, one of the interesting things to me, you mentioned Kentucky and Auburn. I think people tend to forget that Kentucky played a lot of games without wear, without topping. They weren't healthy. Well, Bruce Pearl is just now getting Flanagan back tonight. So in some ways, from a get healthy, stay healthy perspective, Kentucky and Auburn are tied at the hip. Under three minutes to go. Here's Williams. Here's Hannibal now. After the save by Brown. And there it is. We have seen that more than once in Trey Hannibal's career. The offensive charge. Yeah, I said this in the first half. He, he's such an aggressive player. It's a fine line between being aggressive and out of control. Tried to Euro step. And I think most players now, Dave, are kind of defensively anticipating the Euro step. But again, stop, play off two feet, shoot your little floater. KD Johnson. with a pass inside to McMullen, who was fouled on the hill head to the free throw line. Collins is a guy right there, 13 and blue. They got to get him going. He transferred in from Davidson, right. where he was a double-figure scorer the last two years. He's sitting at five points a game, and Coach McMahon telling us they need him. to. He, he needs to be that double-figure guy for them. Yeah, he's had serious shooting struggles, just 25% from the arc. Whereat Davidson a year ago, he made 38% from bonus land. 
but he's got a ton of experience playing in his 122nd game. And you're right, Dave. They, they need more from him. He had 18 points, four rebounds, four steals against Auburn last year when Davidson played the Tigers. But tonight, Collins, just three points. KD lost the handle. Tigers will back it out. Shot clock at nine. Williams will try again from behind the arc. He's much better around the rim tonight. <laughs> he hadn't missed around the rim. <laughs> It was a wide open look, though. And when the game gets like this, Dave, you know, my, my sense of assists go way down. In other words, let it fly. Yeah. Well, our women's basketball doubleheader next Thursday will feature the top ranked team in the country. South Carolina in Missouri to take on the Tigers, 7 Eastern. And then it's 23rd ranked Texas A&M hosting Vanderbilt and College Station. Both games are right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Conference play is upon us. Can't wait. And on the men's side, it is going to be some kind of race, not just for a championship, but really the, the top four seeds to get the double bye in the tournament. There's going right. to be a ton of games that are very meaningful in 2022 well we showed you the in, earlier the lsu gauntlet that they run well guess where that gauntlet starts right on the floor you're looking at wednesday night next wednesday night and of course the tigers at home in that opener against lsu and they're on the road at south carolina that'll be a fun one january 11th at alabama what do you make of Alabama right now? I mean, you've talked a little bit about them, yeah. but obviously very highly thought of. But the last two or three games, they've just been really out of sync. Well, I don't think they've been great with the ball in there. In, in other words, the guy with the ball hasn't necessarily made great decisions. And they're, they've taken a step back defensively, and we knew they were going to. You're not going to replace... Herb Jones, you're just right. not. You can't. John Petty. John Petty became a much better defender later in his career. One minute. One minute remaining. Nice spin move by McMullen. Yeah, that's a power move there. All right, now let's get somebody a shot that hasn't played a whole lot. Look for your shot right now. No need to pass it around. Chris Moore get one up. His minutes probably going to be reduced with Flanagan back in the rotation now. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Auburn has, before we get out of here, this is worth noting. I don't want to let this one slide by. Auburn has 11 block shots tonight. They were yeah. first in the nation with 7.4 per game coming in. Now that average isn't going down, is it? And Dave, while I have a chance, partner... Merry Christmas and have a great holiday. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Same to you and the entire Wise family. I know you'll head back and see the grandkids after this one and certainly wish all of our viewers out there a wonderful holiday season and Merry Christmas to all those folks as well. Auburn gets an early Christmas gift with a 71-58 win over Matt McMahon's Murray State Racers and to push the non-conference home winning streak to 39 games. Couple of double-doubles. Green with 13 points and 10 rebounds. Jabari Smith with a dozen and 10 as well as all.